This is quite steep. <laughs> well, I made it this far. Hello and welcome to beautiful Scotland. Where to begin? It's been way too long since I did one of these videos. It was something I really wanted to do last year. Um, but the whole of last year just seems to have gone by in a bit of blur of work and not really, not really having time to do videos as much as I wanted to do. So this year, uh, I'm trying to make more of an effort to get the camera out and film some more of the stuff. So I'm up here in Scotland for a week and there's a few things that we want to do. Tower Ridge on Ben Nevis is one of them. Uh, Agag's Groove on Buckletive Moor is another. But we're just here for a week too. Hopefully the weather gods are going to be good to us and um, do some rock climbing, scrambling. So um, let's dive in and see what the week brings. Okay, day one of the trip and it was quite nice in the accommodation where we were staying. Um, headed up to Glen Nevis because we thought if you go to New Poldu, there's it's a collection of crags. They're fairly accessible to the road, so if the weather does crap out, it's easy enough to escape. They're also not long, long multi pitches. So we came here, but it's a bit wetter over here. So now we've got the dilemma of um, do we hang around in Fort William? wait to see what the weather does maybe it'll dry out or go off and bite the bullet and do some walking at the moment we're not sure but we just come for a little walk to scope out the crags so group decision made uh me and john are gonna head off and do a walk there's a chance, slim chance, the weather might improve uh, and this rock will dry out. But John's not that confident uh, climbing on wet rock. I can understand why. Um, and it was quite wet. So we're gonna head back to the car, go for a little drive. Unfortunately, me being me, I accidentally somehow took my uh, walking bag out of the car which has got my waterproofs in. I've got a little one, which is okay for climbing, but not you know, anything serious for walking. So I've got to go back to the accommodation, get my rucksack, my walking sack, and um, we'll catch up with you in a little bit once we've got our lives sorted out. So we've made it around to Glencoe. The weather is cold, got a few spots of rain. Maybe climbing was a good choice. Maybe over in Glen Nevis, it's wall to wall sunshine. We'll never know. Well, we won't, and I don't really want to find out. But the plan is we're going to do the, uh, the Three Sisters in Glencoe. I've heard a lot about it. It's uh, something I wanted to for some time. Um, it's quite well known, the Three Sisters of Glencoe. It's a um, guidebook says. Seven to nine hours for this. So I thought I had to watch it. We weren't equipped. Nothing at all to worry about. Um, we're just going to fly around this as quick as we can. Let's get going. Typical rock climber. <laughs> my usual typical thing you know be bold start cold I was absolutely freezing when we left the car she the hat on I am absolutely roasted so it's time to put this away be bold start cold I always say that very rarely do it
This is fantastic, isn't it? Woohoo. So from here, uh, the path goes down there, down to the bottom, and then you might be able to just pick it up, going up there into the cloud. By this point, it was getting quite late in the day. It was past 3 p.m. And as we walked our way up the valley, it got steeper and steeper until we finally hit the snow. Now we could see the patch of snow from the bottom of the valley. We knew it was coming. We just didn't anticipate how steep it was. John decided to turn back. He was a little bit out of his, out of his depth and not really comfortable in that terrain. And fair play to him, he held his hand up and said, I, I wanna go back, Rich. John did give it a good go. So we had a little chat. He gave me his blessing, I think, as I progressed on. I'm embarrassed to admit, I wasn't really prepared for this. I didn't have micro spikes or anything like that. So I had to resort to kicking in steps into the snow. Now I've done quite a bit on snow and ice, and it is definitely easy with crampons. But I think the only thing that saved me here is having that previous experience and confidence to be able to work up the snow. And as I was making my way up the snowy terrain, I met another group that were coming down. These lads were part of a bigger group that had split just out of the car that I was heading to. And this group had completed all of the three sisters. But having completed the third one, the one I was now heading to, they realized that their two options for descent was to come down this snow gully or retrace their steps back over the other two sisters down into Glencoe. Half of the group had opted for the snow slope and the other half had opted to retrace their steps. I can understand why the other group decided to retrace their steps. It would have been a much longer walk, but it would have avoided descending this quite steep snow slope. After making quite slow progress on the snow, I eventually managed to pick a line out that took me away from the snow onto a grassy slope. And then I picked my way along the grass and ended up with a fantastic view down into Glen Etty. From the col, it was just a short push up to the summit of Stob Curry Skriach. Although disappointingly, when I got to the summit, it was a bit of a false summit. The true summit was just a few steps a little further. And the view from the summit was absolutely stunning. Throughout the day, the cloud base had lifted, so it was now clear of the summit. The only summit that remained in cloud was Ben Nevis. You could see for miles around. Now I had to consider my options. I didn't really have much choice in the matter as John had turned back and was waiting for me in the valley. But the other option would be to continue as we had planned originally and do the Three Sisters. Because being quite a handy fell runner, I could probably get over fairly quick. The only issue with that was that John was waiting for me. So my only option really was to descend this snow slope, which I didn't really want to do, but it was the only option to get back to John. Heading down, and I think I want to head down to a bit of snow there. You see, it's quite steep. <laughs> well, I made it this far. Mm. Uh, no, it's it's all right. I won't recommend it. Though. I really would not recommend it. Uh, so, if you come up here and the snow in this uh, gully, I'd say to no go, really. And if you are doing the Three Sisters and the snow in here, the only way back is to retrace. If you came up the other way, I mean, from the other side, if you did the Three Sisters and that was your third one, the one I've just done, um, the only way you could get back down is to retrace your steps. Uh, which would mean going back over the other two sisters. I don't think there's a way to avoid summiting the other two. But uh, yeah, that's a valuable lesson learned. Uh, if you come up here to do the three sisters um, and the snow in these gullies, don't come this way. Yeah, I said lesson learned. Oh man, I got these little uh, micro spikes. They're, they're really good and stuff like that. Oh, I didn't bring them. I'm absolutely kicking myself. And I said the lesson is, if you're going to do this, don't go up there. The lesson really is, be more prepared. I thought I had everything I needed, but apparently not. Um, anyway, uh, stay safe out there. Don't be an idiot like me. Back down to the path now. So, um, back to the relative safety of the path.
Just need to get back down to the car, catch up with John on the way. And then time for a, a wee dram, maybe. Uh, yeah, looking forward to it. There we go, three sisters, well, one of the three sisters done, back down safely. And in case you were wondering what it looks like when it's not in cloud, that is it. <laughs>